Animal Crossing New Horizons is just a little over a month away, and yet it feels like we know nothing about it. It feels like we're on a deserted island. Now, we're sure Nintendo will clear all of this up soon enough, but until then, let's explore exactly how much it is we have yet to learn. So here's everything that we don't yet know about Animal Crossing New Horizons. And let's kick things off with the main event, the villagers themselves. Because while we've recently learned of quite a few returning to the game, there are still surely plenty more that we haven't, including entirely new villagers to the series. But how many new animal friends will this installment add? That's a good question, and more importantly, will we see any more personality types or even new animal classes altogether, such as reptiles or sea creatures? We haven't seen any signs of them yet, but in a game called New Horizons, you might expect to see some entirely new faces, right? Now, when you first move to the island, it's a quiet and lonely place, but luckily, two animal friends will move in alongside you. But what about after that? Will other villagers move in at specific intervals? And will you have any say in who joined you on your island? Speaking of characters, there has been a distinct lack of information on the special characters. Now, sure, we know that faces like Isabelle and Harvey are in the game, but we have no idea what their exact roles are. After all, she was assistant to the regional mayor before, but there's no mayor at the start this time. Isabelle can be seen wearing a Nook shirt, so perhaps the two are in cahoots? And Harvey's house features a camera. Might he be a photographer? We could endlessly speculate what this could mean, but ultimately, it won't get us closer to the answers we need. For others, it remains to be seen if they even make a return to Animal Crossing New Horizons. The recent decal leak offered looks at a new reptile and boar, who likely replaced the existing roles of Nat and Joan respectively. The year-round events and holidays are actually the biggest mystery in all of this. Every entry in the series so far has shifted events around or changed them altogether, and so far we haven't seen a single one. No fishing contests, no town festivals, and no holidays. Nothing. We simply have no idea how any of them will pan out, or even which events are here at all, especially with how the game now includes a hemisphere setting, allowing the seasons to reflect your real-world location. But what we don't know is if, or how, it will affect the timing of the events themselves. The whole thing raises far more questions than it actually answers, which is secretly also kind of exciting. Speaking of locations around the world, Nintendo revealed in early December that they would add various Mexican items including quite a traditional dress. So we wonder if there will be even more country sensitive items. After all, Animal Crossing has never brushed different cultures aside, with Gulliver and his travels around the world, region specific holidays like Toy Day on December 5th, and even some costumes that would randomly appear in the shops. So it's not unreasonable to think that more might be added. The expansion process for your town, along with the various services, is something else we don't know anything about. Beyond the two villagers, your only help at the start is Tom Nook, Timmy, and Tommy. For everything else, you're on your own. You can pay off the debt that you accumulated due to your travels, explore the island at your own pace, and slowly build up your settlement. But what's beyond that? Obviously, the player can start thinking about a house, but how will other villagers be handled? Will they have their own debts too, which you can conveniently help pay? How will new services be brought to the island? Personally, we would hope for the crowdfunding system that was introduced in Animal Crossing New Leaf, but it could also depend on certain thresholds. Will we get the freedom to choose, or will it be doled out on a strict timeline? We have no clue. In either case, the growth of the island also depends on its inhabitants. As we learned very early on, up to eight players playing on the same Switch can reside on a single island, which also raises the question of how many animals and players can live on a singular island altogether. While the island is a decent size, it might not take long to become overpopulated, especially since the various services will also take up space. Maybe we'll see the return of multi-purpose buildings like Retail from New Leaf, or a Nook Shop with various segments inside? And how exactly will the Nook Shop expand this time? Will it be based on spending set amounts like before? Speaking of buildings, where's the museum? Well, even though we haven't heard a peep about this series mainstay, it's almost certainly going to be back, considering we know that Blathers is in fact in New Horizons. In addition, the developers have already announced that a new slew of fossils will be added to the mixture, but who knows what else might await you to gather in the game. Especially given the new island setting could lend itself to all new collectibles. Beyond the museum, what the heck is everything else? As in, all the town shops and fixtures. Although we have seen a decent amount of footage, all of it is from early in the game when the island is completely bare, meaning that we have no clue on what goes where. So our main question is, will all the buildings and services even end up on the island itself, 
Or will you take the seaplane to another island that has all the goods, at least at first? While the city portion of City Folk was a bit undercooked, New Horizons could flesh it out considerably, offering a special location to take care of all your shopping in the early moments of the adventure. Pocket Camp, the last game in the series, did something similar, though its role was quite underplayed. Heck, maybe it could act as an online hub of sorts where you can meet up with the other players from all over the world. And speaking of the collectibles, you'll want a place to hold on to them, even if temporary. And one thing that keeps popping up are these little storage containers and backpacks. If New Horizons is incredibly upholding the island theme, we wouldn't be shocked if you had portable storage everywhere you go. Now, sure, we don't think we'll have access to a backpack or a bucket directly, but we believe that these seeds aren't planted without reason. You are building up a town from scratch and are gathering tons of things for crafting, which makes storage so incredibly important. We've only seen the standard pockets, so there is enough here to speculate. Then we have the crafting, which is an entirely new feature, and also something that we don't know much about, including the exact extent of the mechanic itself and what all you can build. How far will the materials go that you can collect? After all, we already know that there are different wood and rock types and a variety of different flowers, so how deep does it go? For such an important element, it still feels oddly mysterious. Plus, are clothing items craftable? You won't be able to get much from the beginning, which makes us curious how you can quickly elevate your character. Moving on, patterns. How do those work? All we know so far is that the process is now an application on your Nook phone but we never actually see the application itself in any of the footage, so the developers are keeping exactly how it works close to their chest. We can imagine a lot of improvements though, considering the Switch has a touchscreen built in. But after you make one, how will you actually share it? In the past, it was possible to make QR codes for each one, but that seems impossible now given the Switch's lack of a camera. So could there be an online sharing platform similar to the one for custom Mii Fighters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Maybe it'll all be tied to the Nintendo Switch Online app. Speaking of the Nook phone, while we know much of what it can do, including storing all of your do-it-yourself recipes, Nook Miles missions, and map, there's an entire empty section at the bottom of the menu with space for th icons. So it makes us wonder, what else is left? Perhaps it'll be how you manage various services later in the game, or maybe a rad multiplayer feature that we won't find anywhere else. It might even be where you can access amiibo functionality or play a weird minigame. And then there is the multiplayer. So far, we know that up to eight players can enjoy an island together, but what all can you do beyond the base Animal Crossing activities? For example, there was a special island that could be accessed in Animal Crossing New Leaf, allowing you to net some unique rewards. So could there be even more new islands here that allow access to special events for your multiplayer gang? Maybe that is where a special hub area can be found and new goods can be acquired. And what about online? Will you only be able to visit your friend's island while they're online? And if so, does that mean the Dream Suites might return? And most importantly, will you finally be able to send letters to your friends without having to visit their island? The only thing we do know is that you'll be able to fly with Dodo Airlines and meet up with your buddies. Now we just learned that the game will have amiibo support, but we know literally nothing else, like how you use them or what exactly they do. But considering there were five packs of amiibo cards in addition to the various figures in the Animal Crossing series, including Digby, Mr. Rossetti, and K.K. Slider, we can't help but wonder if we might be able to pick our own villagers who move in. Okay, that probably won't happen, but we wouldn't be surprised if there were some special rewards tied to the amiibo. Oh, and how will you scan them in? We wouldn't be surprised if this were an app on the Nook phone, given NFC technology is something many phones have built in already. Now, Nintendo's never been shy about referencing other games in Animal Crossing, and yet we haven't seen a single reference to one yet. Welcome Amiibo even gave us Splatoon and the more recent Nintendo consoles as special items. The Pocket Camp mobile game created rooms and cookies that allowed you to make the Nintendo playground of your dreams. So what all Nintendo references could New Horizons be hiding? Perhaps a Cappy hat? Or maybe a Breath of the Wild style statue? We'll just have to wait and see. Another potentially big thing that we don't know about is if the ability to time travel will be back. Now, this was never really an official feature per se, but more of a hack. This time-tested tactic allowed players to manually adjust the time and date at any time in order to travel into the future and speed things up. So will it return? It's hard to say, although it's entirely possible Nintendo might lock down this behavior if they're looking to expand the online focus and prevent players from essentially cheating. Okay, we're just about done here, so let's wrap up the video with a rapid-fire list of everything else we don't know. Who are we? 
I mean, what is your exact role on the island? Do you become a mayor again, as in New Leaf, or will you be more of a general caretaker, if even that? Diving. We haven't seen the player character swim so far at all, so it remains to be seen. Is there a limit to how much furniture you can scatter across your town? So we've seen the emotion buttons being used by the developers, but how and where will we meet Dr. Strunk to obtain them? In New Leaf, he was linked to a comedy club, but in other entries, he roamed around the town freely. How big is the item catalog? How many new items will there be to obtain in your lifetime of playing the game? When it comes to making roads, we still don't know how you will obtain materials and get proper equipment, and that is driving us insane. And there you have it, most everything we don't know when it comes to Animal Crossing New Horizons. But if you can think of anything else, let us know by posting in the comments below. And who knows, we might even do a follow-up. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Animal Crossing and other things gaming. Until next time, bye.